interested in checking out some tips and tricks about Adobe Lightroom and my JPEG workflow, then this video is for you. Hi, my name is Jorge. Welcome. In this channel, we merge creativity and productivity to try to live a more fulfilling life. This is my first video of a two-part series about my photo editing workflow in Adobe Lightroom. Today, we'll be doing a basic setup of Lightroom, some tips and tricks, and we'll also be editing JPEGs from multiple Fujifilm cameras. Part two is gonna be a similar video, but only editing the raw files from multiple Fujifilm cameras. So let's get started. Before we do any settings check and we dive into Lightroom, you need to have a calibrated screen. You don't have to have a professional monitor, something like a P3 display from a MacBook Pro or an iPad Pro will work, but please don't do any editing until you have a calibrated display because you're just wasting time, you're gonna have to redo it again. Get a calibrated monitor or a calibration tool, check out my video here on how to do that, and now we can jump into the setup. All right, so I already prepared a couple photos here. I have from the X100T, X100F, X100V, and the X-T3. Uh, these are all JPEGs we're gonna be editing in Lightroom. So let's fire up Adobe Lightroom. And we're working with Adobe Lightroom Classic. And the first thing I wanna do is go into the preferences and change a couple things that drive me insane. Number one is show import dialog when a memory card is detected. Every time I plug a memory card, a pop-up screen comes up and it's just extremely annoying. It lacks the software, so I'm just gonna deactivate that one. And the second setting that is very important, specifically if you have JPEGs and RAW on the same folder, is to enable this setting right here. This is very important. Otherwise, it'll browse to the folder and you won't be able to see the JPEG files, only the RAW ones. So make sure that's enabled. It will ask you to relaunch. Go ahead and do that. All right, before we start editing, I just wanna make sure we are organized and we're properly labeled. So we're gonna go into the collection section and create a new collection. And I'm just gonna call this JPEGs. And create. When we open the collection, there's no photo, so it's time to import our JPEG. So we're gonna click on import. We're gonna to browse to our folder. So I created a folder here called for editing. So I'm gonna check them all or uncheck them all, or if you have a bunch, you can do that. If you have a couple, you can just select them by hand and import. All right, so in our collection, we have our four photos right here. But the important thing about this section is that we can see the actual attributes or the metadata of the photo. So if I click here, this is the ISO, that was the shutter speed, that's the resolution. If we jump to the next one, is a X100F, so on and so forth. It tells you the lenses and then pretty much all the settings that you might want to check out before start editing, just to give you a reminder or a refresher of what you did. So it's a good thing that we can just review the metadata right here and take a look at it. So we'll start with the X100T photo and then when we jump into the develop tab, before we start doing anything, we can take a quick look at what tools we have available, the treatment, the tone curve, the HSL, the detail section, lens correction. This is especially useful for raw photos, for, for JPEG, not so much, and split toning and so on and so forth. If you wanna customize it the way you would like to use it, then just right click and customize and you can just move around, etc. Hit save. It may ask you to restart a software. Just go ahead and do that first. All right, so the thing about my JPEG is that I try to get the look that I want in camera. So the editing is actually very minor. So we'll just do a little bit of uh, cropping here. So I'm in the center and we'll auto angle it. So make sure it's balanced. Looks a lot better there. So we'll play the exposure, contrast, highlight, and shadow, and from here we can start playing. So. It's a little noisy, so we can go into the sharpening, maybe about 30 or so, and we can go into the noise reduction and maybe about, maybe 15. It's a little bit better. I like contrasty photos, so I'll bring it up a little bit here. The shadows maybe to 40. With the white balance, we can leave it as shot or we can do auto. I like to leave it as shot, but I like to play with the HSL here. There's a lot of green tint and yellow tint here as well, so we can drop that a little bit and you can see how it affects the color. 
or doing a, a drastic shift, but it's just for you to see what we're doing. We're gonna bring this to minus 20 and the yellow to also oh, maybe minus 30 or so. Maybe a little bit more green. Yeah, uh, you can do vibrance and saturation. I shoot in classic chrome, so I don't like it too saturated, but I do like a little bit of, uh, a little bit there. So maybe five, so maybe two or so. The clarity is one of those interesting things that a lot of people overuse it and it can look pretty awful if you go 100% or even 50% or even 20%. And it's very soft as well. So you want a good number. For this particular case, I know that maybe 10 to 15 works for me. And again, these are settings that I've tried and tested before and I've done for a while. So I know that I like this particular look, but it doesn't have to be the numbers you have to choose or you have to select. So you just keep that in mind, all right? And just a little bit of exposure, maybe 30 or so. We can do remove chromatic aberration if you have highlight sources or light sources where it just fringes in purple. So removing chromatic aberration is gonna help you with that. Um, and if we had a raw file, we can do lens correction. In the effects you have things like vignetting. So that gives you a rough idea what to expect. I'm not doing beginning on this photo right here. And we also do have an amount of grain. Now I don't shoot with the grain enable on my JPEG settings. I'd rather do it in post. I don't normally add grain. I'd rather do it in post and not in camera. So keep that in mind. I wanna keep a clean file, especially with JPEG photos. So I don't have to worry about breaking the file later in post. Just bring the exposure just a little bit higher. And this is the quick result. This is something that I like. It's not scientific, it's not perfect, especially here looking at the histogram. It's just a look that I personally like, that I personally want. So keep that in mind. All right, so moving to the X100F photo. We're gonna go into the develop tab and again, start playing with this. This photo is actually really close to the way I like it. Again, we're just gonna do a slight crop and an auto angle. Play with exposure a little bit, maybe a stop over, a little bit of contrast. Bring the highlights down a little bit and the shadows a little higher. This is in uh, Osaka Station. Really nice pathway there. Uh, again, I don't apply sharpening in camera. I like to do it in post. So all my settings are really low in camera, maybe 15 or so. And we're gonna play with the detail, the sharpening, but also a little bit of noise reduction, just maybe 10 or so, not too much. I'm not too concerned about noise. I'm not interested in doing vignetting in this photo, but I do want a little bit of uh, clarity. So we're gonna go to maybe 15 or so. Doesn't break the file apart. And that's it. That is all I had to do. I like it. Again, this is just my style, the way I like the photos. Maybe you don't agree with the histogram. Maybe it's not perfect. It's just the way I like my photos. Jumping to the X-T3, I did a video on the Fujifilm X-T3 and how I think is the best bang for the buck of this year, especially because the sale's still going. So now we're gonna develop this photo right here. Now in here, we have a little bit of harsher highlights. So we're gonna bring those down. I'm gonna bring the exposure up a little bit. Shadows a little bit as well. A little bit of clarity here, maybe 10. Bring the contrast, because I like contrasty photos. Exposure to 80. Yeah, we're gonna do um, sharpening, I like sharpening my photos and we're gonna do a noise reduction here as well, maybe 10. Though I don't see a lot of, uh, a lot of noise. Remove chromatic aberration, just in case we have a little bit of purple fringing here on the highlights. And last but not least, the X100V. 
Now I like this white balance a shot. It looks a little bit of a Roger Deakins here. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of contrast and also bring the exposure a little bit down. Bring the highlights down and the shadows down as well. I like this look right here. I mean, may not be for you. I just happen to like it. Sharpening about 15 or so. Yeah. And a little bit of just noise reduction, just in case. Removing chromatic aberration. I want to bring the vibrance a little bit down to maybe five or so. And in here, I want to bring, I want to bring the shadows a little bit higher. Maybe 40, maybe a little bit of saturation, maybe a little bit of vibrance. <laughs> All right, so we have all my photos edited here. And if you click through the photos while looking at the histogram, it's not that different. I like my shadows. I like exposing for the highlights. So the histogram for me, most of the time looks very similar. And that's just a personal preference. I'm not telling you this is the way it's done. I'm just telling you this is how I like my photos and this is how I like to edit my photos. So, that's how I edit my JPEG files because I like to get the look as close as possible in camera. The next video of this two part series is about editing raw files in Adobe Lightroom. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, for giving me your time and your energy and good luck with your creative process.